All right, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get under the truck, remove the drive line, get it out of the way, and then take this nose cone off. You're gonna see something that looks like this. I'm gonna show you guys how to repair your rear end without taking it out of the truck. Um, this, is, this has saved us um, thousands over the years. It's gonna be this problem right here, and you don't have to take the power divider out. If you take it to a gear shop, they're probably gonna to wanna to just sell you a reman power divider. It's probably going to be about 4500 bucks. Um, this kit that we got right here is about $1,300. And uh, this is something that you guys can do on the side of the road. You could do it in a parking lot. You could do it, you know, in your driveway. You're going to pull this right out of the rear end here. And it's going to come out with a yoke on it. And then you got this shift collar and this gear that's going to stay up in here. <laughs> and that'll be in your rear end. And this, all these pieces were the spider gears that came in here and it, it stripped the input shaft so this truck the drive shaft was spinning into the rear end here and the truck was going nowhere and we had to tow this truck in but again very very simple way to fix it and i'm going to show you guys how there's um one thing that doesn't come with the input shaft kit and it's this this ring right here this is what locks your power divider in and then there's this bearing right here which nine times out of ten is going to be good so i got to show you guys how to remove this bearing without damaging it and um we got to take the yoke off right here and we're going to reuse this nose cone and if you look over here this is what the input shaft kit comes with we've got a new input shaft we've got this this gear and then we've got the big gear that goes up front and then you've got a new spider gear set and it also comes with a um, little snap ring, new yoke nut, and a new input shaft seal. All right, so I got a bearing puller set, and come find out it doesn't work on this bearing. But this bearing is the one that you need to get off without damaging it. And I'm going to show you guys how to put it back on. And I'm going to try to just pop it loose with this chisel here and just get right, right under that inner race right there. And we'll see we'll see what happens. I don't know if it's just Okay, so this is a little unorthodox. This just goes to show you though how user um how DIY friendly this is right here. So I'm just gonna try and remove this bearing like this. Now that I got it popped loose with a, a uh, wood chisel. Not a wood chisel, but just a regular top chisel. Okay, so we got it off. This bearing we reused. And uh, we're going to clean it up with some parts cleaner, and then I'm going to show you how to install it on your new gear. <laughs> Alright, so what we're looking for is we want this inner race to turn like a straw color. And uh, that's way, don't beat on this bearing. You're going to be tempted to just grab this bearing, put it down on there, and beat on it, and you're going to mess it up. So don't do that. Heat it up like this. And just bake it. You can see it changing colors already, but you don't want a blue color. You want it; it'll turn real straw color. You can you'll see it. It's a brown. It's a tan color. You can't miss it. See that brown color, guys? That's what we want right there. Don't turn it blue. It's yeah, it started to turn blue, but it's okay. And now, you just take it, set it right down on there, and it falls right down. Alright, so the first thing that we did was we removed the bearing that we wanted to reuse. It doesn't come with the kit. You can get a new bearing, but the reason why I don't is this is a DIY video, and um, a new bearing is going to call for different shims. You're going to want to re-shim it. Whereas this, doing it like this, 
see there's some shims that come in right around here. These are just, and, and they all set preloads on these two end bearings. And what I do, I've done about 15 of these and uh, I just reuse the shims here. Now this, this bearing goes, goes up into your rear end on the back side, on the inside. Now the race that this rides in, it's got shims behind it too. So I want to put it back just the way I found it. And um, all you gear nerds can tear me up in the comment section, but um, you know, they're gonna say that if you put new gears in it, you're gonna wanna reshim the whole deal. But um, I'm just a owner operator. We've got seven trucks and this, just doing this has saved me thousands and thousands of years. Like say this is, um, to, to get a new power divider, they're just gonna wanna sell you a remand one to have them install it. It's gonna cost you 4,500 bucks. Like say this is $1,300 for this right here. And more than nine times out of 10, it's gonna fix your rear end. Uh, on occasion, your ring gear and pinion is gonna be damaged inside the differential. And that's not gonna be covered under here, but like I say, nine times out of 10, this is gonna fix your problem. You gotta take the, uh, the yoke off to get to this front bearing in here. And also, it's important to note that some, some power dividers, they're all the same. This is all the same. You know, you got Meridor, you got Rockwell, you got some heavy duty stuff, you got some lighter duty stuff. Um, it's all looks the same on the inside. You've got your same components right here. Just other, sometimes they're a little bit bigger. Now, um, some rear ends, they will not come apart unless you take this yoke off first. This is the input yoke on your rear end. And I'll show you whenever we go back together how it all looks in the rear end. But anyways, some of them, you can't get this piece off without, this is just what I call your nose cone or your nose cap or whatever. But um, you can't get it off unless you take the, uh, the yoke off on some models. So that being said, I'm gonna pull the yoke nut, pull the yoke, and we're gonna expose this bearing in here. spider gear set all these spider gear pieces came out of here now when you're removing that it's easy to drop one down in there and to be honest with you I've dropped some pieces down in there and there's there's four of the biggest magnets you'll find in the industry down in the bottom of those rear ends so you got your gear guys are gonna tear me up again on this but um, I have left some of these pieces just with faith that they're gonna find their way to that magnet down on the inside of the power divider so then you got this gear set and it's got a little wear ring on it and then you got your input shaft and see here's where our failure was was the splines on the input shaft got eight out and then right where the input shaft goes through the middle of this spider gear set it's busted now I've seen that failure many many times and that's pretty common now sometimes you'll just have a busted spider gear that's riding around in there and it'll cause like a popping whereas this this type of failure the drive shaft was spinning into the rear end the truck wasn't going anywhere didn't matter if your power divider was locked in or not it's just not moving so like I say we had to tow this truck in there's your yoke nothing wrong with it we need to change this input shaft seal right here we need to get this bearing off without damaging it as well. So we're just trying to pull this bearing here without messing it up. You hear it popping, it's coming off. tools on this instead of using an impact on this puller because I just have a little bit better feel of it and I know it shouldn't really take much force to get this bearing off there a lot of times you'll have the, the jaws set on there crooked hit it with an impact and mess the uh, the bearing carriage up or 
So, I just do it by hand. So you got the bearing off there. We'll get it cleaned up and I'll show you guys how to put it on there without beating the crap out of it. All right, so we're gonna bake this other bearing here. And again, we're gonna just, we're gonna be looking for a straw color on this inner race. We don't wanna turn it blue or you'll take the temper out of it. And uh, you guys are gonna have to forgive the mess in the shop because people work here. When you bake these, you need to find a, a piece of flat steel somewhere. Uh, don't try and do this on the concrete or something. It'll pop the concrete all up. Uh, just a flat piece of metal somewhere. Not anything will do. Now we're using an acetylene torch. Um, I'm pretty sure you can do this with a map gas torch too. It's just going to take longer. And again, we're just looking for a, uh, a straw color. Now there's the straw color. Now last one we got just a little bit too hot, which is going to be all right. But you, again, you don't want to turn it blue. It's about to turn blue, so there's that straw color that we're looking for. Now that's seated down there all the way. It should have just dropped right on, but I, I didn't quite heat it up good enough. If you can see, it didn't take a whole lot of beating. It basically just fell right on. So, there's your old bearing on your new input shaft. So let's go do the, the uh, input shaft seal. All right, so we got the nose cone in the vise here, and I'm gonna show you how to get the input shaft seal out. I just take a just a regular chisel, stick it in behind there. Ouch. That's all there is to it. Then we'll just clean this part up and I'll show you how to install the new seal. Alright, so here's the new input shaft. You need to put it in your nose cone. Um, I don't have an input shaft driver, seal driver, or anything. This is a DIY video. I'm using a board and a hammer. And you just kind of want it to be pretty straight. That's basically it. Moving on. All right, so I got my new bearing on my input shaft. I got my input shaft seal installed in the nose cone. And now we just need to install the input shaft into the nose cone, just like so. There's a little bit of debris on this yoke right here. Clean it up where it rides on that seal. There we go. <laughs>
that's done. Put our yoke in that. Torque this to the exact manufacturer specifications. the yoke installed on the input shaft, we got the new bearing on the input shaft, we got the input shaft seal installed in the nose cone. So now we just need to set our gears up. It's got this little brass ring here and it's got a oil galley and that goes towards the gear. So the flat spot, the flat side goes down and I just use a little lithium grease, just something. This, this part of the rear end relies on splash oil so you're not going to get any oil until until you get up to speed so I just give it a little coat just something to keep it from just being completely dry so there's that now this shift ring here is uh, it's for your power divider to lock your power divider in and out they've all got one and it does not come with the input shaft kit so if, if yours got damaged, you need to order this in addition to the input shaft kit. Yeah. Okay. So now, here's that. There's a little snap ring that holds, holds these on. Okay. Now this is how it'll go in the truck. We'll reuse our old shim, just like I said before. So far I have a 100% success rate. I have not had, I have some that's been running for a couple years. Uh, no problems out of them, so. Uh, I just reuse the shims that I came with and, and that's just what we do. But now this this gear right here in your shift ring will go up into the rear end and I'll show you in a second. But these will go up by themselves and then you'll take this, this assembly just like this and you'll stick it up in your rear end. <laughs> but anyways, I'll show you here in just a second. All right guys, so we're underneath the truck here. Here's our rear end housing. And so this is, this is where your input shaft goes on your power divider. And a few things to inspect in here. I'm trying to get to where you have enough light. Is that race right there? You just want to make sure that this race is not damaged. You want to make sure that the splines on your output shaft are good. And then you want to look up in here at your ring gear teeth. Which like I, like I was telling you guys, um, most of the time your ring gear... Is, your ring gear is... Let's see if I can get the camera to it. Right back here, that's your main gear in the, in the power divider that drives your front drive axle and 90 I'm gonna say 95% of the time there's nothing wrong with your ring gear or your pinion and I'm gonna try and get a shot of the pinion okay there's the pinion gear right here and you can inspect it from this position 
Also, if any of your spider gear pieces fall down in there, you can see that you actually, you can get to them pretty good with a magnet. So there's no need to pull your whole differential. You know, all these bolts right here, they go all the way around and pull it out. This is something that you can literally do in your driveway or in a parking lot or on the side of the road. I've done one on a on a well site for an oil company. <laughs> Just right on location. But anyways, I'm gonna show you. So you've got, here's our new gear with the bearing that we reused. And then we've got our shift ring. I'm going to show you how to put it in there. It goes in just like this. Let's see if I can get a good shot. There you go. So there's the... It's got to go in there just like that. And you can just let it kind of hang. Let's see if I can get a good shot. And then, you're going to put your gear right in there. And then just lift that shift ring up. There you go, just like that. Now we're ready for our upper gear set to go on in there. And I'm going to try my best to get a good shot of it, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. It's important to note that there's an o-ring inside here that seals it so you don't have to use a bunch of silicone on this it's best just to go clean and dry with no silicone um, plus that's going to mess up your clearances with your shim so don't use silicone on this deal and the old o-ring is usually fine i noticed the input shaft kit doesn't come with a new o-ring on this nose cone piece on the inside of it where it it slides into this rear end housing there's an o-ring that goes around here that's what keeps the grease from coming out right here so and make sure that you push it up by hand because if you have two gears that aren't lined up properly you know if they're like that and you tighten this nose cone down you'll break this nose cone uh, you can tell that's right as rain right there. So we'll start our bolts. I don't think so. I like to start everything by hand before I hit it with an impact. Make sure it's not cross threaded. That's all there is to it. You put your drive line back on and you just saved yourself about $3,500 by doing it yourself. Last step is to install your drive line. 